Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Who all is here? I'm going to give it another minute or so before we get tent today. I'm going to keep this one relatively short just uh, because it's a already somewhat short lesson um, as far as content is concerned. But also, it's a, hey, what's up, Shayna? What's up, Alexa? Malena, hello, hello. Uh, it's, a, it's short content-wise, uh, but also it's something that's relatively common sense, I feel like, so it doesn't need to be belabored. Chance to enjoy break. Get out in the sunshine a little bit, you know, keep your social distance. All right, let's get to it. So here's the deal. Today we're talking about classes again, and we're going to kind of delineate classes in America, social or socioeconomic classes. When we're talking about classes in America, they're generally socioeconomic. Uh, so we have, your book covers four classes. We usually only speak of three classes in America, uh, but your book breaks it down into four classes. So first we have the upper class. And the upper class, your book would refer to as the top 1%. Um, and your book gives several different metrics for what this 1% looks like. Um, and it varies from state to state what the top 1% of wage earners looks like. Uh, but you know, it'd be six figures income and usually in like the mid-ish six figures income. So somewhere like in the $400,000 a year range income would be the top 1%-ish. Uh, but again, that, that varies state to state. Um, and it also varies like in big cities uh, where cost of living is very high. Income has to be very high to match that. But anyway, uh, the upper class would be the top 1%. Then there's the middle class, which we've broken down into upper middle class, middle class, and then lower middle class. Uh, there would be, and by the way, th this would be, this would make up about 90% of wage earners according to your book. Now, I wouldn't go... If you count the working class, the, not the entire middle class, the entire the book would say the middle class would be 45%, and then the working class would be uh, another 45%, which would make up 90%. But usually when we think of middle class, we include the working class in the middle class. Uh, so I, I'm not speaking specifically about wage here. I'm speaking of social class. Uh, anyway, then your book would say there's the working class, which it would break into lower middle class and then what we would consider generally the lower class that your book calls the working class. And then there's the underclass your book points out, which is the very impoverished. It would be the lowest 9%. Um, but usually we would say lower class would include anyone below the poverty line, not just those most impoverished. Um, and right now this may be, the, the numbers may be different, but the 2014-2015 numbers were somewhere close to 15% of Americans below the poverty line. All right, any questions, comments up to this point? Okay, so the fact that there are some people that have a lot of money and some people that have next to no money uh, would be inequality. And your book would point to the fact that there needs to be a solution to economic inequality. Um, the problem with solutions to economic inequality is that there, there really isn't a solution that solves the problem that doesn't create a host of other problems. That's not to say that there isn't economic inequality. There, there is economic inequality. But that's to say that solutions that are offered oftentimes tend to compound the problem as opposed to solving the problem. If you look at, you know, the Soviet Union tried to solve economic inequality and they ended up bankrupting the Soviet Union, right? Uh, if you look at Venezuela, that's another 
uh, problem area where they've tried to level the economic playing field and it has caused issues. Cuba would be another example. I mean, you know, you can point to some of the the socialist utopias um, in Scandinavia, for example, and I'm not saying that they haven't made strides, but strides toward that. But um, by and large, inequality is something that exists, and it's a very difficult problem to tackle. However, something that is an important feature in, in the American economy, and particularly in the capitalist economy in America, is the idea of class mobility. That since we have a socioeconomic class system, if your economic status increases, generally your social status increases, so you're able to have class mobility, either upward or downward mobility. This is sometimes referred to as social mobility as well, where one is able to move up or down the socioeconomic ladder depending upon one's income. And one can change their income uh, either through entrepreneurial means or through changing one's career, through further education, things like that. Uh, and by the way, there is a, a big link between education and income. Now, this is not to say there aren't outliers or exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, the higher the education level that a person has, the higher their income will be, generally speaking. And this is a problem with those who are not in the upper income levels or in the middle class, is that uh, access to education tends to be decreased. So, for example, paying for college can be very difficult um, if, if the annual tuition for college is your entire family's annual income. It's very difficult to pay for college. Um, but if the college bill, your annual college bill, is one one hundred of your family's income, that's not a big deal at all, right? So the more money one has, the easier it is to pay for college. Uh, that's not to say people can't work hard. Absolutely. That is a very solid point. Uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson would say something to the effect of success begets success, right? So as you do increase, you get more opportunities. And then as you increase from there, you get even more and more opportunities. I mean, look at someone who's at the peak of celebrity, like LeBron James, for example. I mean, he turns people down all the time for opportunities. Uh, yeah, or very important social media influence, definitely. Uh, and the higher status one gets, the more opportunities one gets to increase their status. Yeah, that's, that is the interesting thing. It's the same with, like, when success decreases. Uh, one's opportunities decrease as well, and it gets to the point where the lower one is, the fewer opportunities, or at least the fewer perceived opportunities one has, or at least the opportunities that someone has, they're not as impactful. So, yeah, that's a very great point, Shana. Uh, another thing that people deal with that are on the lower income levels is health and health care, that access to health care costs money. And the less money someone has, the fewer options they have. So, for example, um, if you're a multimillionaire and you have a health issue, you can pay out of pocket to see specialists. Your insurance may not cover it, but you can still be like, ah, I'll pay out of pocket for that, right? So, if the best specialist, if you live in New York City and the best specialist is in Pittsburgh. You can fly from New York to Pittsburgh or drive from New York to Pittsburgh and you can pay whatever it costs for that specialist to see you and if that specialist has to do special treatments, you can pay for that. If you're making $20,000 a year, that's not going to work out very well. You may be able to blow your entire year's earnings on seeing the specialist, but you're not going to be able to pay for the $2 million treatment, right? Um, so having excess income also leads to better health outcomes a lot of times as well because you're able to pay for prescriptions, you're able to pay for treatments, uh, and healthcare is very expensive. And if you look at health insurance, uh, if you have to pay for health insurance, a lot of people are paying like $10,000 a year for health insurance, and if you're making $20,000 a year, paying $10,000 a year for health insurance is a lot of money, right? So 
there definitely is inequality. The problem is finding solutions to that inequality that don't make the issues worse. Kind of like the Affordable Care Act. It was supposed to make health care more affordable, but actually caused health insurance rates to increase dramatically. All right, other questions or comments that people have? Okay, uh, so what I just wanted us to see is that there are social or socioeconomic classes. We have the upper class, which your book would define as the top 1%. I would say we usually look at it as like the top 5 to 10%. Uh, the, the book definition may be 1%, but I'm saying if you see someone who's making $250,000 a year, you would probably look at them as more upper class than as middle class. Uh, and then we have middle class. Your book would say there's a difference between working class and underclass or lower class. We tend, I think, societally to lump them together. All right, that is all I've got for today, unless you have any final questions. All right, well, great work, everybody. Keep up the solid work, carrying your homework and everything like that. I appreciate the effort you're putting in. I hope you all have a great Easter break and enjoy it. All right, see you guys.